Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a relay. If you want to sync up something with your camera motion in your timeline, then relays are going to be your friend. Uh, say you've got a dropper or a catapult or a flamethrower, an MP3 track that you want synced up with that robot motion repeatedly, uh, then unless it's compatible with 24 volts, you're going to need a relay. A relay is just a switch. Uh, but rather than flipping a switch with your hand like you would a light switch uh, to close the circuit, you're telling CC Lab to apply a voltage to the relay which closes that switch. That means that by doing that, it will happen repeatedly at the same time in your timeline every time. So that is what makes relays really flexible and powerful. Relays come in all shapes and sizes. The CSU Sim is uh, it has a 24 volt output. So that's the most important thing when you're selecting a relay is that it it is a 24 volt relay. So I've got a couple of relays here uh, that I just found. Um, this one's really simple. Um, found you know you can get these on Amazon or any other site. Uh, this one is my favorite. Uh, this I got on Amazon. I'll put the link below here. Um, this board has four relays on it. So I've got the ability to plug in multiple devices and control all of those through CC Lab. It's dirt cheap too, it's like seven bucks. So uh, I'll drop the link down below in, in this page. There's two main parts to every relay. There's the coil and the switch. The coil is the part where you apply the voltage to, and once that voltage is applied, the switch is the part that closes and actually completes the circuit for the device that you're triggering. So if you look at the a diagram, uh, for the relay that you've selected. The coil is usually the part that is represented by either a rectangle or a loopy line. Uh, here on this relay, it shows that A2 and A1 are the connections that are connected to that coil. And it shows a negative and a positive, so I know that my positive needs to be connected to A1 and my negative to A2. And I'll show you how that connects to the sim here in just a second. And then the switch uh, is the other part. So I see that um, it shows 11 is connected to 12. That means without energy, without vol a voltage applied, those are already connected. Uh, and then when you apply voltage, it connects 11 to 14. So I'm gonna use 11 and 14 so that when I apply that voltage, those two are connected. This relay board is a little different. Um, like I mentioned, it has four relays on it uh, and it requires power to the board itself to, uh, to function. So I will include a diagram on how to use this one with the SIM down below as well. So the coil is the part that controls the switch. So that's what we want to plug into our digital output on the SIM. Uh, on this relay I've got, I've got the black wire connected to my negative or ground or also common. So I'm going to plug in that wire right there. All of these, these connection points on this plug are ground. So that's, that's why it shows that line there. And then my positive is red. Uh, that's the one that you plug into one of the top connections, your digital outputs. And these are numbered. I'm gonna plug it into number one. These numbers correspond to CCU Lab, the digital outputs or DO numbers in CCU Lab. So let me jump in. I'll show you how to uh, do a quick test and make sure that we're connected. All right, so I'm gonna add a channel, a trigger, and we are using DO1. Add that there, has a name. We were using it for blue plates, so it's got that name in there. Now what you can do is if you're in T1, which I am, you click on this little arrow next to DO1, you hold the enable, and you can press on. Now, I press it, I've got this indicator that shows that it is in fact uh, getting the signal and that that switch is closed, which would trigger my device. So most relay relays or relay boards have some kind of indicator, um, if they don't, Usually you can hear an audible click of that switch switching, and uh, that is a good enough indicator for your test. 
So those are the basics of how to use a relay with CSU Lab and the SIM. Uh, I didn't want to get too technical in this video, um, but I'm going to add some notes down below on this page. Uh, just know that if you have a device that requires high voltage or high current, that needs to be taken into consideration when you choose a relay. So check that out if that's the case. And otherwise, thanks for watching.